Hello and welcome to Answering ATPL. In this video, we will discuss the topic of chart projection and conformality. This video is divided into four sections. The first section look at why we need maps and chart and how information from the Earth's surface, which is ellipsoid or near spherical, are transferred onto papers. In the second section, we will look at the properties of an ideal chart and why all kinds of projection could not meet the properties of an ideal chart. In the third section, we will examine the type of projection used to produce aviation charts. And in the last section, we will discuss chart conformality. Section 1. Map and Chart Since the Earth's shape is near spherical, the most accurate representation of the Earth's surface is a globe, commonly known as reduced Earth. However, using reduced Earth for our daily activity is cumbersome and inconvenient. Thus, we need map or chart to represent the Earth's surface to conduct our business. A map or chart is the representation of the Earth's surface. A map usually contains many details, whereas a chart is less detailed but has enough features for navigation. In this video, the usage of both words is interchangeable. The process to transfer the Earth's surface information into a flat piece of paper is known as projection. In the old days, light was used. This process is conducted by using a translucent reduced Earth. A light source is then positioned somewhere near the reduced Earth, in this case at the center of the model. Tracing paper is then wrapped around the reduced Earth. When the light is turned on, the reduced earth shadow is cast on the tracing paper. The shadow cast on the paper is then traced to produce a chart. This method of projection is known as cylindrical projection. As you can see, the chart produced look distorted because it is. It is later corrected mathematically before it can be used for navigation. More about this matter later in the video. Nowadays, all charts are made using the computer based on mathematical formulas. However, knowing the old technique will help us understand the properties of different types of projection. It is impossible to accurately represent the Earth's surface on a flat piece of paper without distortion has been proven by a German mathematician Carl Frederick Gauss using Theorema Aggregium. Therefore, all types of projection have some trade-off depending on the application. To find out what are the trade-off, let's look at the properties of ideal charts. Section 2. Properties of Ideal Charts Properties of ideal chart are as follow. Angles on the Earth's surface should be represented by the same angles on the chart. Scale should be constant and correct all over the chart. Shape on the chart should be the same as the shape on the Earth. Equal areas on the Earth's surface should be shown as equal areas on the chart. Let us examine each one of these properties. The first properties are the most important properties for navigation. This characteristic is known as conformality or automorphism. These two words are synonym and can be used interchangeably. Since we are navigating using heading and track, which essentially angle measured from a datum north 
either true or magnetic if the track we measure on the chart is not the same as the Earth's surface we will definitely not arrive at our intended destination on the screen is the comparison between Google Earth which represents the globe and skyvector.com chart which represents aviation charts as you can see both charts have the same track reading however not all maps or charts are conformal most of the maps in an atlas are not conformal they are mainly used for other applications and are essentially useless for navigation the second property on our list is that scale should be constant all over the chart on the screen is a map produced using Mercator's projection as we had learned before on the topic of distance from the equator to 30 degrees north the distance is 1800 nautical mile and from 30 degree north to 60 degrees north the distance is also 1800 nautical mile as you can see the yellow and blue arrow lines are not equal in length which means that the scale is changing since Mercator chart are used for navigation we can conclude that this property is not essential however the scale need to be correct at some point the solution is that different types of projection are used for different parts of the world more about this later in the video by the way don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified when I publish a new content. The third one is that ideally, shape on the chart should be the same as shape on the earth. On the screen is the comparison of the shape of North America between the globe and Lambert conformal chart. As you can see, they are similar but not the same whereas if we compare the shape of North America with Mercator projection it look the same some projection preserve shape while others do not since both Mercator and Lambert conformal projection are used for navigation we can conclude that this property is not essential the last property on our list is that ideally equal areas on the earth's surface should be shown as equal areas on the chart on the screen is a mercator's projection chart look at the size of greenland compared to africa they look about the same size but if you look at the globe greenland is way smaller than Africa on the other hand the Gulf Peters projection can preserve the size ratio between the Earth's surface and the chart but as you can see the land shape is severely distorted furthermore Gulf Peters projection is not conformal and cannot be used for navigation all projection could not satisfy all ideal chart properties two of these requirements could never be fully satisfied scale can never be constant and correct we can modify chart mathematically to give nearly constant scale in small areas but not over large areas shape of large areas cannot be represented perfectly However, it is possible to represent the shape of small areas reasonably accurate. The remaining two properties can be obtained on charts, but not all on the same chart. Session 3. Aviation Chart Projections In this section, we will look at three types of projection and briefly touch on the derivative of this projection the projections 
that will be discussed are as follow cylindrical conical plain or sometimes referred to as azimuthal and transverse and oblique cylindrical projection for cylindrical projection light source is placed at the center of the reduced earth paper in the shape of a cylinder is then wrapped around the reduced earth the paper touches the reduced earth at the equator when the light is turned on shadow are cast on the paper the orange line illustrate light path as you may notice the shadow expands as it get further from the equator making the produce map not conformal to make it conformal it need to be corrected mathematically the result of mathematically corrected cylindrical projection is mercator projection most of the world can be projected using this technique except the poles usually only the portion near the equator between plus minus 30 degrees north and south is used for navigation to cater for scale expansion. Detailed discussion on Mercator's projection properties will be included in a later video. Conical projection For conical projection, the light source is placed at the center of the reduced earth. Paper in the shape of a cone is then placed on top of the reduced earth the paper touch the reduced earth at one point however nowadays we use computers to project our maps and chart the actual place where the paper touch the reduced earth is shown on the screen some of the paper is placed inside the reduced earth it is physically impossible but can be done inside software the places where the paper intersected the cone are known as standard parallels and the middle between these two lines is known as parallel of origin. This process produces Lambert's conformal chart. Usually only the section between the standard parallel are used for navigation. The position of standard parallel and parallel of origin can be changed by adjusting the cone size. Lambert chart are usually used between latitude 25 degrees and 80 degrees north and south. Detailed discussion on Lambert conformal properties will be included in a later video. Plane projection. Plane projection, sometimes referred to as azimuthal projection, uses a flat paper position at the reduced earth pole. The light source is positioned on the opposite pole. If we want to create a northern hemisphere map, light need to be placed at the south pole. The illustration on the screen will produce a southern hemisphere chart. This process produces polar stereographic charts. Polar charts are usually used in the region between 75 degrees to 90 degrees north and south. Detailed discussion on polar stereographic properties will be included in a later video. As you may have noticed, the region used for navigation depends on where the reduced earth touches the paper during projection. Therefore, you need to remember where these positions are. This region are used because the scale is not so much distorted compared to other regions. On the screen is the overview of type of projection and where it is used. This figure is only for guideline and not mandatory. Transverse and oblique projection. Transverse and oblique projection are merely derivative of the three types of projection discussed before. It is also common in aviation. However, the use is limited to a single route or a small region. 
You don't have to study this projection in detail as it is not called for in the syllabus. It is enough that you know that it exists. Section 4. Conformality In Section 2, Properties of Ideal Chart, we have established that the angle on the Earth's surface should be represented by the same angle on the chart is crucial for navigation. This property is known as conformality or sometimes referred to as automorphism. To achieve conformality, two fundamental conditions must be met. The conditions are as follow. The meridian and parallels on the chart must intersect at right angle. At any point on the chart, the scale should be the same in all directions or changes at the same rate in all directions. Let's look at each of these conditions. Imagine the square on the screen represent an area on the Earth's surface. The direction from point A to point B is 45 degrees. Notice that meridian and parallel intersect at right angle or 90 degrees. Let's see, a projection distort the area. The meridian and parallel are no longer intersect at a right angle. The direction from point A to point B also change, thus making it non-conformal. Therefore, it is essential for chart used in navigation to have meridians and parallel intersect at right angles. Meridians and parallel do not need to be straight lines. Diagram on the screen represent a set of meridians and parallel. Both diagrams are conformal even though the parallel of the diagram on the right side are made of curved lines. This is a transverse Mercator's chart. It looks weird, but it is conformal. As you can see, all the meridian and parallel are intersecting at right angle. The second condition relates to the scale at a point on the chart. Once again, the square on the screen represents an area on Earth. If the scale expands at the same rate on both meridian and parallel, the chart maintains its conformality. However, if the expansion only happens on meridian or parallel, it is no longer conformal. A Mercator chart is distorted in the north-south direction. It is conformal because it is mathematically adjusted. Gerardus Mercator introduced the adjustment in the 16th century. That is why, until today, this type of projection is known as Mercator's projection. What do you think of this video? Please let me know in the comment section below. And if you find the video beneficial, please like it and share with others. By doing so, you will help other people to find the video. Don't forget to subscribe and if you need additional help in your exam preparation, consider joining Answering ATPL membership. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the following video.